you're in the market for a new phone but don't want to break the bank, you have a lot of really good choices out right now and T-Mobile is here to offer you another one. The question is, is the Rebel 2 Plus any good? I'm CE Tech Dude, and this is the T-Mobile Rebel 2 Plus review. I've been using this phone as my daily driver for over a week now, and I'm here to give you my honest thoughts. The Rebel 2 Plus is the successor to last year's T-Mobile exclusive Rebel Plus phones, and this phone is manufactured by Alcatel and is almost a carbon copy of the Alcatel 7, but you get an additional gigabyte of RAM in this phone. I never used the Rebel line of phones, but I couldn't resist when I saw the Rebel 2 Plus come out. The specs and the design really caught my eye, and not to mention the price. Coming in at a palatable $250 outright, I was excited to order it. But did the excitement continue past the initial impressions? I will let you know, but first, let's go over the design of this phone. I really love the all black aesthetic of this phone, save for that pink, or should I say magenta, power button, which I actually rather like. Uh, it stands out. This phone is smooth plastic on the back and it does get smudgy after extended use. And the sides of the phone are more of a matte plastic to help with grip and I didn't have any trouble gripping this phone. You also get a fingerprint sensor on the back which works well. Although mine did start to develop a little bit of a lag between pressing it and getting to the home screen once I had all my apps and settings set up. This phone also has face unlock which works well and it will trigger when you get to the lock screen. It's plenty fast, but it does not work in the dark. And you do also have to press the power button to get to the lock screen, as this phone does not have lift awake. On the side of the phone, you have a volume rocker and that textured pink power button. And then continuing on to the top of the phone, you get a headphone jack and something that really surprised and delighted me, an IR blaster. Now to get the IR blaster to work, you will have to download some kind of remote app from the Play Store, since the phone does not come with one installed. I used Peel Universal Remote and it worked really well for me. And I really wish other manufacturers would put IR blasters back in the phone because it's really awesome to have one in built in. And another hidden feature of this phone is the built in FM radio tuner. And again, there's no app installed out of the box to take advantage of this. So you will need to download some kind of app from the App Store, and Next Radio worked well for me. Once you get that set up and installed, you'll get a message saying that your phone is equipped with an FM radio tuner, and you'll be off to the races. Just make sure you have headphones plugged in, or else the FM radio will not work. On the bottom of this phone, you get a USB-C port with fast charging capabilities, and it takes about an hour and a half to fully charge the 4,000 mAh battery with the included power adapter. This phone also has a single down firing speaker on the bottom, which gets plenty loud, but it won't win any awards for sound quality. But it does do a good job of notifications, which is most important to me. On the left side of the phone, you get your SIM and expandable storage via a SIM slash micro SD card slot. And this phone has 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, and it says it'll support up to 128 gigabytes of expandable storage, but I had to reformat my SD card to FAT32 to get it to work. So it seems it cannot use the XFAT storage format. And finally, moving to the front of the phone is where you'll find my absolute favorite part of this phone, that screen. The six inch full HD plus screen on this phone is beautiful, and I really have no complaints about it. It's an IPS LCD display and it has 402 pixels per inch. It carries the same 18 by 9 aspect ratio that most phones have lately, and it gets super bright, making it for easy readability outdoors. And it also gets plenty dim for when you need it to. Colors look bright and crisp, and watching movies and really doing anything on the phone is a pleasure thanks to that beautiful display. But of course, a big beautiful display is nothing without a battery to back it, and this phone has it. With its 4000 mAh battery, you'll be able to watch, read, and browse to your heart's content, and have juice to spare at the end of the day. On heavy use days for me, I'd still have, have plenty of battery left at the end of the day, and I was getting about five hours of screen on time or more. And I was normally able to make it a day and a half on a single charge with heavy use, which is awesome. On a side note, this was with intelligent power saving enabled, and when I disabled that, since I really had no idea what it did, I was getting worse battery life, so I'd recommend leaving that enabled. The earpiece on this phone is also great. Uh, Collar sounded loud and clear, and they said I sounded the same way on their end. This was, of course, in a quiet environment. When there was a lot of ambient noise around, I had a hard time hearing the caller. And the speakerphone was also decent and gets loud enough. Again, though, if you have a lot of ambient noise around, it'll be a little uh, hard to hear. Signal strength on this phone was also really good, and this does have band 71 for access to a 600 megahertz wireless spectrum. Next to the earpiece, you'll find a notification LED and an eight megapixel front-facing camera that has an LED flash, which is pretty cool. 
And the Revel 2 Plus also claims IP52 certification, meaning you can splash it with water. And I did not test that, but I guess we'll have to take their word for it. Now I know what you're thinking. So far this phone sounds amazing. Well, let's continue and let me tell you what this phone lacks. This phone does not have NFC, and this may not be a big deal, but I just want to let you know that it's not including the phone and you won't be able to use any contactless payment methods. It also does not have wireless charging. Again, not a big deal, but I just want to let you know. There's no 802.11ac for Wi-Fi, so you're stuck using older BGN Wi-Fi networks. And while we're talking about Wi-Fi, one issue I had was when turning off Wi-Fi on this phone, sometimes it would not connect back to LTE for whatever reason until I turned, off, turned on airplane mode and then turned it back off again and everything came back up fine. Not happening all the time, but it was super annoying when it did happen. This phone also does not have Bluetooth 5 and is using the older Bluetooth 4.2 standard. Again, not a big deal, just wanna let you know. Okay, so hardware review is done. Are you ready for the software? Let's get started. Out of the box, this phone comes with Android 8.1 and it's almost a stock version of it. Even the launcher has the Google Now feed on the leftmost home screen. Pretty awesome. Also, this phone has no bloatware apps installed unless you count the T-Mobile apps that come installed on the phone, which I don't. It also has some pretty useful additions such as double press the power button to launch the camera and the ability to change the color of the dock and rearrange the dock buttons. Sadly, there's not a way to do system-wide theming on this phone, but no big deal. This phone also does have some pretty aggressive power management, which led me to some frustrations. So let me tell you about that real quick. If you head over to the settings and then the smart manager, you can adjust which apps you want to apply auto start to. By default, most apps are restricted, but I recommend turning off apps that you want to be able to update frequently. I had some widgets that wouldn't update until I either relaunched them or turned off this power optimization, which was pretty annoying. Now let's talk about performance of this phone. This phone has three gigs of RAM and a 2.4 gigahertz octa-core MediaTek processor. I wasn't really sure what to expect from a MediaTek processor, but I do have a few minor complaints about it. If you're doing normal day-to-day -day tasks with this phone, you probably won't notice any issues with it, except maybe the occasional lag when you're switching apps. But when you open large apps or start to multitask, things start to slow down. Take, for example, using Google Maps for navigating and then trying to use another app while that's minimized. Things lag pretty badly. Now this may just be a demand of Google Maps, but it was pretty evident and pretty annoying. And if you're a Snapchatter, you will be disappointed as this app is borderline unusable. I also did benchmark this phone using N22 benchmark, and then here are the results if you care. If not, that's okay. Gaming on this phone actually works very well, and I tested several games that all ran perfectly, such as Super Mario Run, Sonic, and PUBG. PUBG ran great at medium settings, and it looks really great on this beautiful 6-inch Full HD Plus screen. Okay, moving on, the last thing I want to go over is the camera. The camera is another pretty weak point of this device. It's primary 12 megapixel camera. It's pretty decent in good lighting, but pretty bad in low light. The camera also has HDR mode that improves things a bit, but overall I'd say the camera is not very great. Quick annoyance is that the camera app would not save the settings I chose for turning on HDR or turning flash from automatic to off. And every time I reopen the camera, I'd have to adjust the settings again to my liking. Kind of weird, kind of annoying. And it's not super obvious where the settings are for the camera, but if you open the camera app and hit the circle icon with four dots in it, you can get to the settings from there. The portrait mode on this phone works well when you have good lighting and it uses a two megapixel secondary camera to help with the background blur or bokeh. And I think the pictures I took with the portrait mode turned out pretty well. The camera app also has a few other different modes uh, you can choose from and some of them are actually pretty cool and I actually liked them a lot. I really like the social mode which allows you to take a single picture and then review and share from the bottom half of the screen. Or you can take four photos together that stitch together in a collage. And you can also do a photo booth mode where it takes four pics in quick succession, photo booth style. Pretty cool. Video recording is basically the same story as the photo mode. This phone does not have optical Im image stabilization and instead uses EIS. And it can also only record 1080p at 30 frames a second. Take a look at this video sample from the rear camera and judge for yourself about the video quality. Hey guys, this is just a quick video and audio test on the Revel 2 Plus. Uh, this is not stabilized in any way besides the actual onboard stabilization. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.
And here's the front-facing camera video performance for you to look at. And this is the test of the front-facing camera on the Revel 2 Plus. Again, this is not using any kind of stabilization besides what's on the phone. Uh, so what do you think of the video quality, audio quality? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Now, on the subject of the front-facing camera, I think it does a pretty good job, actually. And it includes an LED flash in case you need a selfie in low light. So I think that about covers everything about this phone. Uh, I really wanted to get well acquainted with it so I could give you my accurate and honest opinion. And overall, I rate this phone as pretty good. I think the price needs to come down about $50 to really make it a great value. But for what you're getting, I think you'll be happy if you go in with pretty low expectations. And so to quickly recap before I end this video, you're getting a big, beautiful screen, great battery life, great call quality, great signal quality, and stock Android software with just some minor useful additions. But you're also lacking a good camera, NFC, and I'm also not sure how software updates will be for this phone, and it could be stuck for Oreo for a while. And so another option to this phone is maybe buying perhaps an older generation flagship phone, such as the Galaxy S8. Uh, I think I saw those recently for about $300, which is just a little bit more than this phone. But if you want a brand new phone and you want to finance it for cheap through T-Mobile, then this is the phone for you. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long, but hopefully it was helpful to you. Let me know what you think about the T-Mobile Rebel 2 Plus in the comments below. Also make sure you like and subscribe this video for more great content. Appreciate you watching this video guys. Hope you have a great day. You just got CE Tech. Take it easy and see you next time.